Welcome to another episode of Backstage Antiques. I'm Kathleen Snyder of Arcade Antiques and Jewelers in Riverside, and with me this evening is Greg Gall, Uncle Greg of Flowers by Gall in Brookfield. Our first um, guest this evening is Carol from LaGrange, who has brought us a beautiful French, I was going to say French, American spelter. Usually they were done uh, by French people, and they called them spelter, which is a white pot metal. And this is a um, copy oh of the Doughboy from World War I. Uh, Carol, do you want to tell us how you acquired this? It belonged to my aunt. And as a child, I always looked at it in her front hall. And after a while, it came to our house. And I enjoyed it very much. Now, was it purchased during an uh, exhibition or anything, do you know? It was purchased before I was ever born, so oh, I don't okay. know. <laughs> Um, it's a very nice theme. It shows uh, highly detailed for a uh, pot metal, and it's very, very heavy for a pot metal or a white metal uh, vase statue. I would say that uh, this would have a current value because not only of the quality of the piece, but the theme of the piece would probably be four to five hundred and fifty dollars. Hmm. You would probably see that in a. Um, you might see more on it if you went to a military show, yeah. but in a. Um, Normal antique store, you would probably see 450 to 550 on it. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you. Don't crack walnuts with it. <laughs> He's really nice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. What is this little thing you brought? A gentleman came into my store one day, and he was 89 years old, and he was going into a nursing home, and he had his little cups and knife and fork and baby spoon, and they're all engraved Billy. And he said he didn't have any relatives, but he knew whoever got this would enjoy um, the beauty of the pieces. And These are sterling, right? These, these are, are all, all, sterling, all sterling. He should have taken it to a nursing home, because these could be used as dribble cups. <laughs> <laughs> and the, his name's on every piece, and the, there's a little man in the moon on the spoon, and little knife. Now this is a teething, it's mother of pearl, Mother right? of pearl. And a teething ring. Teething ring rattle. Hmm. And these were popular in England um, around the turn of the century up to the 20s. They're very collectible now. Oh. Yeah. Hi there. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> You're not keeping it. <laughs> okay, do you want to tell us how you got this, Jan? Well, it's from my in-law's estate, and I wish I knew when they got it, I remember it being there 40 years ago at least. And uh, it's supposedly going to my son, and I shouldn't say this if I'm on TV, but I'm keeping it until the children are a little bit higher. <laughs> about 40 to 50, the kids? <laughs> yeah, right, just about that. <laughs> this, this is a really beautiful piece. It's Thank a beautiful you. art piece Thank glass, you. and the uh, bottom of it is all hand engraved and it says Sebs. Sebs. Mm -hmm. Now Sebs did a tremendous amount of porcelain work, but they didn't do an awful lot in the art glass. But because art glass was owning rampant in France, they got into the field also. Uh, Greg, you're the florist. You tell us what type of flowers are on there. I think we determined because of the foliage, we thought it might be a bleeding, bleeding heart. heart. Doesn't look like Looks a bleeding like heart. It to me. And the way the, mm -hmm. the brackets of the flowers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. bend themselves downward, I'm thinking yes. it's a bleeding heart. But the color scheme is great. Yeah. Burgundy going into a very pale pink, uh, a watery pink with a opalescent center. I think that's great looking. Beautiful, beautiful piece. I may keep it. Keep it up. <laughs> uh, this is a glass overlay or a glass cutback. Uh, it mm -hmm. is not acid. It's just beautifully uh, done. The bottom is as pretty as the top itself. It's cased glass, as you can see. There's yes. the different layers and what have you. I would put a value on this between... Um, 550 Five and 750. 750. Mm -hmm. Did you explain how they do this? Now, the glass is layered colors. Mm -hmm. This is, mm -hmm. of course, an opaque, and then it's a lighter pink. And the, finally, the top layer is a very dark burgundy. Mm -hmm. And as they cut into those layers, they reveal very similar to a cameo. Isn't that marvelous? Okay. Isn't that wild? Cameo. Cameo. Yeah, cameo. <laughs> That's right. Cameo. cameo. You got right. your cameo today. Yeah. Oh, that's a great piece. Excellent oh, piece. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Jane, very mm -hmm. much. All right. Now, don't give it to your kids yet. Not yet. No. <laughs> Wait. And not to you either. No. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, now you, this is... <laughs> Don't show them my, my cloth watch. <laughs> they, they, most of these have their names on it. This was a Mr. Croft's. 
But these are all sterling. These are were all they sterling. primarily always sterling? Or were uh, they sometimes silver plate? A lot of them were coin silver. Coin the, silver. The, I think that's coin, the bigger one that we'll The show. early pieces you think were sterling, and as they get low later pieces tend to be plate? The plate with plate. a um, gold wash, because to drink out of the metal itself, it leaves a very goofy taste. So uh, a lot of these have a, uh, gold, a gold wash, wash in them, so that you don't transfer the taste of the silver. I think, mouth. too, it was a big thing to receive a baby cup, so you wanted to give a, a nice sterling silver piece in that. And so often now the people are, uh, you'll see several names on it. They pass them down from generation to generation, and they put the, the dates on, and that's always nice. Hey. Bracelet like that at home. <laughs> oh, yeah. It says yeah. baby on there. Uh, yeah. Forgot about that. In silver? In silver? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I have the magic lantern that's on the floor. Oh, You're going to have to I bring have to it up. <laughs> All righty then. Put it there. And this is oh, this is a very sophisticated <laughs> adjusting device. It's just a little tube that slides out to adjust the. Uh, but this has your little. It had glass plates, right? But didn't necessarily no, have to have glass plates. It could be solid. It could have. Yeah, it could have. It solid. Could have uh, it's, uh, we found the back. You, you mentioned it was patent dated 1914. Mm -hmm, so 1914. That's right. But it could date to a little later past that. That's just a patent date. Uh, I'm judging by the cord. It is a little later than that. By the, if that's the original cord. I uh, think it is. Huh? Yeah, I think it is. But they were very collectible. You still find them around. Uh, the condition on this is really it's very great. good condition, yeah. And this is, like you said, an early electric piece. Mm -hmm. It has the original light bulbs, clear light bulbs, 75 watts in it, mm -hmm. and they're in porcelain sockets. And these would come off so that the uh, air could vent out so you wouldn't burn up the pictures. Uh, this probably had its heyday between 1918 to 1928 before the movies were mm -hmm. so uh, popular. But this was great home entertainment. This is it the uh, prehistoric VCR, I think. It was our, our television. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we had to find a wall to project it on so it would be nice and clear. And then uh, you can, you know, adjust it the... Very sophisticated. You can adjust the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and what we, what we liked about it was uh, you had to put in your pictures upside down. And then every once in a while, my dad would forget and put it put it right side up, and that was that was real funny to us. You know, <laughs> you'd drop one in here, then you'd move over and see this one, and then pull this one out to change it, so you'd have constant motion. Mm -hmm. Because of the condition of this, usually you see them they're rotten, uh, rusted, and rotten and rusted. Rotten. <laughs> rotten and rusted. Uh, I would put a value on this between 150 and 250, mm -hmm. and it's it's really very nice. It's a great condition, but they're still available. There's still yeah. a lot of them out there. Are there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing yeah. this. Okay, Very thank nice. you. Oh, boy. Let's see, I'll move this one in. This is from 19th uh, century England. I have, you know, a baby cup that was given me when I was born by one of them. I think my godfather gave it to me. It's got the wrong birth date. <laughs> <laughs> How about the right name, huh? I'm serious. It has the wrong, because I could never figure out when I was really born. It had the wrong day on it. Yeah. Uh, this one sits so we can see how pretty. That's a very pretty piece. <laughs> that is nice. Hi. Hello. This is a beautiful <clears throat> um, Jack. Jacquard. Jacquard. <laughs> if you're from the south, you say Jacker, but it's a <laughs> Jacquard. And this is roughly about uh, four foot by seven? No, it is. Six by six and a half. Six by oh. six and a half. Yes, so it, if you square. if it were opened, you could see that there are four roses in the bed, you know, bed of four roses. But if it's a six by six square, with the the hole. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But it is. do you think that was cut down at one time? Oh no, this no. was this was woven in two pieces, and mm -hmm. it's seamed in the center. Okay. You see, there's two panels seamed in the center, and uh, uh, it's had fringe on both sides as well as the bottom but um, the top fringe has been worn off and they, the people that owned it put in a hem at the top so they could put a rod uh, in hang and it. hang it on the wall okay. because houses were cold yeah. and uh, this dates back you see to 1840. 1840. The people that had this, that owned this, were relatives of um, General George Meade of the Civil War days. and. Uh, they used it on the wall as well, kind of a wall covering. Sure, sure. I purchased it from a lady who was born in 1900, 
she passed away about two years ago. And uh, she remembers it when living with her grandparents in her home uh -huh. that uh, is always hung in the dining room wall above the buffet. Uh -huh. They were very neat and clean people because the condition of this yeah, is the excellent. Condition is yes. Very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, now, you've never had this clean, professionally cleaned. I haven't. No, it never. has yeah. been, it but has. I have not. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, the information on how it is to be done. Sure, sure. Uh -huh. uh, this is one of ten that are known. Now the clerk by this particular by this artist, artist. By, by this particular yeah. uh, Joseph weaver, Clar. Yeah. Joseph Clar, K L A R. And he wove from uh, 1838 to uh, 1838 to 1848. 1848 right. uh -huh. This is right at the beginning of his 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 career actually in this. Mm -hmm. uh, these are still available. You see them sometimes. They're not as, as seen uh, as often as they used well, to be. Well, there are only ten of. The, of this Joseph Clars. Right, yeah. but I mean, jacquard uh, pieces such as this 15 years ago were still fairly common. I mean, you could find them in antique shops, but now they're being bought up by collectors and sought after. They're hard. I don't think you come across them too often. No, I haven't no. seen I mean, one yeah. for very long time. When you have to get time. into the Colonial yeah. Coverlet Guild, mm -hmm. which I belong, do belong to, oh. and uh, um, Clarita Anderson of the University of Maryland, um, she is a professor of... Um, textiles and consumer education there. And she has set up a database for uh, as many of the uh, uh, historical coverlets as she can get information on. And at the present time, as I said, they have only 10. 10 of this person. 10 Wonderful. of Joseph Clark. Yeah, very mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, due to the rarity and the condition, uh, the only little badness is where they flipped it over and stuck the rad through it, uh, which is, is not very bad. But no. The, this oh, is no, this is, good, this is considered very good condition. Yes. Mm -hmm. I would put a value on this between 950 and 1200. 1200. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's just very, very attractive. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're very fortunate. I'm glad you belong to the Guild because this oh, has yes. got to be a main mm -hmm. showpiece. Show well, Thank I have, you for. I have shown it before oh, at various places. Good. Lovely. Thank mm -hmm. you Thank for you. bringing this. Thank you for letting me show it. Beautiful. You know what I have to show you this time? We didn't talk about this the last time we had plates. We had a no. Majolica piece, but these are oyster plates. And oyster plates were used prior to World War II. For some reason, after the boys came back from the war, they felt it was, uh, they started eating oysters out of the shells, off the half shell. And prior to that, they would always eat oysters served on a plate. They were never served on a dirty shell. So consequently, the uh, manufacturers are coming here all kinds of oyster plates. This one happens to be a Wedgwood from England That's with wonderful. dolphin motif. Isn't that great? Now you know I'm going to have a stroke because you've got these wires. I know you always yell at me because I have. Oh. <laughs> Never look at ever those. ever put these type <laughs> wires on any of your nice plates. They Listen can, to Ann Kay. Don't do it. <laughs> they can chip the gilt yes. off. They but can did, chip the plate. Did you notice this has a little plastic? That's a little okay. better. All this right. one doesn't. Well, Shame. But I'm going, as soon as I, I'm going to do it as soon as I leave the studio. These are absolutely Isn't beautiful. Great? Yeah. Very nice. And they're a wonderful size. Yeah. You can also put M&Ms on these and bring uh -huh. them over to me. You know, or earthworms if you're going fishing. <laughs> oh, hi. Well, hi. This hi, is guys. Brad. <laughs> hi, little Brad. How you doing, Uncle Greg? I brought ah. you this nice painting. I thought you might want to see it. Brad, we, we could tell a little story. This came off the uh, wall, actually, of Scott's Pet Shop. Yes, it did. It's on his back wall. It's in the front, actually. That's actually, right. the front, by the, the front wall, by the register. And it's... I'm tipping it. it. We're tipping it down so we so don't, we get, don't the get the glare. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Are we getting glare? No? It's cool? Uh, typical scene at the time, it was two fish hanging on a string. <laughs> For some reason, Victorians loved hanging fish. They loved yeah. hanging game birds, uh, hanging flowers. You'd see clusters of flowers in a little ribbon or string for some Just reason. Dead things in general? Dead things in general. That's very Victorian. Yeah. Today we hang tennis shoes. And now we hang things tennis like shoes. Uh, this is just a print. Yes. And it's not the original. It's dated uh, 1896 by an artist, Leroy. Uh, when I did a brief uh, history just an hour ago on this, there were so many Leroy's listed in the book, it's hard to say without further research who it was. Uh, the frame itself is, I think, patent dated 1902, that we, we so. found. Uh, some of the filigree is missing on it. It's an inexpensive frame, very typical of the time because of that coloration. Have you seen this in a lot of metal pieces? Uh, no. It has that, uh, 
what it is is a copper color, and then they take like a torch and flame this out so it would burn part of it away. For the and give it a model. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a model. To give it a model. Though. They did a lot of that to bamboo too at the time, the bamboo uh, furniture. I was just going to add that uh, this particular artist and Jan LaRoe worked for the Chicago Tribune and the Chicago Rotor Gravier section, and these would appear in the Sunday issues, hmm. and people would save them and frame them. So and them and they're and very collectible now. It has this nothing to do with the far side in the Tribune, does it? No, I no. wish it did. <laughs> and they have, um, they do flowers and they do still lifes, and like you said, the birds and the... Yeah, and birds this. and dead But, it, but dead it's a very big. good print. Dead this does look big, like big. a chalk. I guess it's pretty easy to paint then. Yeah. The best value I think we give on, even though the fact that the frame is, is damaged, damaged perfectly in both corners, so it suits well, uh, 125, you think? 125 to 150. Roughly. So you'd say if I spent like six to seven hundred dollars, I would have been ripped off? <laughs> yeah. No, you would have been, uh, you would have been, uh, yeah, I can't say ripped, ripped, ripped off. off. I can't say oh. it the word. Totally. Thank you. Thank you. Also, uh, Uncle Greg, I brought you a little gift oh. I thought you might want to use for the show or if not oh, a personal use. It's a little armadillo. Oh. And it's missing the tail. Yeah, it's kind of cracked off part of it, sir, though. Kidding. <laughs> so I don't know what kind of use that'll, that'll be. <laughs> Gee, but thanks, little Brad. But uh, enjoy it, Uncle Greg. Oh, thanks. What a nice gig. OK. Bye. See you later. Thank you. All right. We're going to break now, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you. Welcome back. Dan from LaGrange? Uh, Westchester. Dan from Westchester. Close. <laughs> <laughs> now, we all don't know everything. We'll preface this conversation with this. <laughs> a lot of us, uh, if we knew everything, uh, I would be laying in the sand in Florida retired. But I don't know everything. And uh, Greg says I don't know that. anything about <laughs> golf. <laughs> don't. Dan, you want to tell us something about this? Well, I, I bought it mainly as a joke. I was out golfing one day, and they had a real short hole. And I asked one of the other guys when I, when I was golfing, when I said, what iron do I use? And the guy said, use an eight. Well, all I had was three, five, seven, nine. So I used a nine, and I come up short. But the next day, I was out at a garage sale, and I seen this in a seven and a half iron. Never heard of it before, and I said, perfect. Next time they tell me to use an eight, I'll use a seven and a half. That's great. And I, I have been using it, and I like it. It's been good for you. Yes, very good. Uh, Greg, you want to read what it says on the It says seven foot? and a half. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Wilson, Wilson, but that's all I really, yeah. And because I'm not into golfing, I have no idea. It would have to go to someone that's really into this. And, and putters now are becoming so collectible. I mean, it's hard to find one at a garage sale anymore because they're buying them up. The old wood shafts, one wood years shafts. ago, uh -huh. they would throw them away. Nobody wanted them. Now they're totally Now they're people totally going nuts for them. Absolutely. Yeah. But I guess if you have a short hole, you got a nice putter. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've, I've gotten a lot of comments on it, you know, every, just every time I go golf and I tell the guy, just grab my seven and a half and bring it over here, you know, seven and a half, what are you, nuts? Do you think you're going to contact Wilson or go to Hildebrand Sporting Goods, which is near you in Westchester, and ask them if they can do Yeah, it? I think I will. Yeah. Just to see when Let's it was, see if, if it was just a, a fluke or if it was a presentation piece or something like that? Well, well, you'll be happy to know, Dan, we don't know how much this is worth. <laughs> you have a nice seven and a half inch putter. Yeah, okay. very nice. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for bringing that. Thank you. And you get the door prize tonight for uh, baffling us. <laughs> how do you get on this show? Who invited that gentleman? Huh? There is no screening here. Okay. These are little ivory pieces. Aren't these great? They're wonderful. They, these two are Victorian ivory pieces. Oh, I can't remember. This is a cute one. This is a little cherub. Uh, with a little broken, cracked heart, a little cute face, a uh, little tiny butt, see that in the back, all carved real nicely. Interesting thing about these, because they were ivory, they used to have like little secret compartments on the bottom. Ah, uh, so. And you could hide little things in there, jewelry or money or, uh, gosh, dope, I guess. If you were into Victorian into that sort of thing, that would be cool. But that, they're little cabinet curio pieces. And they're very popular with Victorians. And this is really more modern. Uh, it's a Japanese piece of a sumo wrestler. But I purchased this one probably about six years ago, right at the time where they're stopping the importation of ivory. And now it's just not even found anymore. You, you just can't find ivory carved pieces. 
but uh, these have increased in value so much I can't even remember what I paid for these. I remember I bought this in an estate, the entire box. It was like a shoe box, and these were just laying all over the box for one money. You want them? Anybody want these things? They're almost valueless 20 years ago, and now they become quite, a, quite expensive, but uh, they're kind of cute. Yeah, this is an exceptional. This is a very good piece. Isn't that great? You can see each hair in the yeah, head. Yeah, little hairs. This is wonderful. Hair under his arm. Some days I feel like that, Greg. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm Bob from Western Springs, and uh, I collect World War I flying books. And my wife uh, uh, bought this book for 25 cents at a, uh, the Plymouth Place uh, resale sale. Um, and it's, uh, it's by Amelia Earhart. It's, uh, I think it's her, it, that's her signature. It's, it's never been uh, authenticated. But the interesting thing is the, uh, in the back of the book, there's a little record, which I'd never played because I can't play it on my machine. It's and a little it, 78. Uh, I think it's 78. And it it's uh, the voice of Amelia Earhart mm -hmm. in 1937, I think? 1932, May 22nd, mm -hmm. 1932, yeah. in London. Yeah, London. she flew from um, New York to Newfoundland and then over to Ireland. Hmm. She was the, uh, really the, the lady, the, 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 the Lindbergh of the lady pilots in those days. So uh, we had the book around for about, uh, oh, I think maybe about a year before I realized that it had that record in the back. <laughs> well, this is the first and only edition too, yes. so that adds to the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. I believe in it, uh, I believe it is her signature because of all the other things. This was probably was a special presentation it piece. Could have been, yeah. And uh, her signature alone is probably 150 to 350. Mm -hmm. So if this is authenticated as being hers, mm -hmm. uh, which I, I think it is, you have a very rare find. Uh, this was owned by C.W. Wyckoff. Who is, could be of the White Cloth studio, Studios, a uh, photo mm -hmm. studio. Mm -hmm. That is it are in Lagrange. Lagrange. Yeah, yeah Lagrange. Lagrange. On Hillgrove. Shouldn't have told them that. Maybe they want it back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Whoops. <laughs> anyway, it's worth, more than, it. it's worth at least a quarter. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah right. It's a good right. deal. Bob, this is Which, really, really a very yeah. nice yeah. thing she, to have. She, wouldn't, she didn't have any trouble getting this published because that was her husband. Putnam was a, was a publisher. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Forgot that. So, well, thank um, you very much. To verify, or to verify what we're saying, you can call Bookman's Alley in Evanston, uh, 8696999. Roger Carlson has 24,000 volumes in his bookshop, and I'm sure he'd like to hear about that one. Okay. That would be right. very good. That's, yeah. that's really nice, Bob. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Thank you for bringing that. Thanks, Bob. And put it in my car now, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so I've been waiting to see this <laughs> all night. Waiting to see this all night. Isn't this grand? Oh, it's wonderful. It's a decanter set. It's and empty. It's empty, yes. <laughs> little cobalt glass. Uh, oh, this is wonderful. And little tiny cross. It's, um, this is just an interesting history behind these. There's many of these made. I haven't seen one this nice in a long time. Uh, and they're still available. They're small egg shapes. You see them all the time at antique shops and fairs and things. But this one has a history. My, uh, one of my aunts won this at a bingo prize back in the 1930s. Apparently, the, the providence behind it, the old woman who donated for a bingo prize received it as a wedding gift at the turn of the century and gave it to these, this organization in the 1930s for a bingo prize. And so my aunt says, gee, gosh, for a dime, I think I'll take it. So she took this and had it all these years. And when my aunt passed away, of course, I inherited it. And it's been in our family. But I just thought it was a, a great looking piece, isn't it? Yeah, Made in Czechoslovakia. They're Czechoslovakia, most often. And this uh, is that spatter, uh, reverse painting mm -hmm, on reverse glass. Reverse painting. These are, it looks, uh, these are decals. This yeah. is just a paper decal from the inside. It's not a, a hand painting or anything. Oh, that is but just that wonderful. Great? I've never seen one of that size either. You can put that in my car too, Okay, I'll put that in your trunk. <laughs> Hello, little pot. Hi. And you are? I'm Sherman. I'm from Westchester. Sherman from Westchester. Okay, well, what do you Greg? think it is? Well, <laughs> I bought it because I thought it was cute. Okay. Um, my dad, when he saw it, told me he remembers using a bucket like that to go for beer as a child for his father. And I've been just using it for a silk plant to put an ivy in it. Uh, actually, from, from what I know about it, it's not antique at all. Oh. 
what it, what it is is uh, a container really used a lot in, in floral shops. In our shop alone, I mean, years ago we were doing this sort of thing, maybe 10, 15 years ago, these are real popular. This is not copper, although it has a copper tone to it. It's got a copper paint wash to it. It's probably made from old tin cans, old gasoline cans. Third world <laughs> countries, you know, do these little art objects. Uh -huh. Uh, in fact, there's a label yeah. on the back, so it's That's, not real old. No marking yeah, no marking, but it's not a real old piece. If you scratch it with a little knife, you'll see it's tin. It's just a tin. It's a tin can, is what it is. Yeah. Uh, resembled those. What did they call those? Old buckets. Oh, we said those it before. Growlers. 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 Yes, growlers. growlers. Yeah. Uh, it resembles them, but they had a lid on it too, as I recall. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, I was too young at the time. <laughs> and because this doesn't have the wash, do not put beer in this. You will die. <laughs> yeah. But it's not antique. Oh, and no. It's just cute. But it's, it's cute. It's, it's real cute. I didn't cute. pay too much, so oh, good. I don't good. feel too well, bad. And you're happy with it. Yes, I like uh, it. Yeah, it's a nice size. Mm. It's just nice for a silk plant. Cool. Or M&M's. Or M&M's. Oh, I'd be afraid to eat out of it. <laughs> M&M's. Oh, okay. They're okay. Thank you. Go fishing, they're Thank good for worms, for too. Thank you for bringing them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's see. This is my water mug. This is your water mug. <laughs> Here comes Miss Lewis. She always sees me at all the antique shows. That's and right. And when I'm at the fair, she yells at me. Hi. This is Shirley Lewis, Hi. the former dean of ladies at RB <laughs> High School. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, you weren't the dean of boys, but you yelled at me back then. That's right. Because <laughs> <laughs> I am a graduate of R.B. High also. This is great. Great piece. Shirley, you want to tell us how you got the, acquired this beautiful Limoges yes. plate? Um, two things I brought tonight both came from um, my home. Uh, I grew up with both of these pieces in the house, and that particular piece was given as a gift to my mother probably in the 40s. So, and I have no idea how, you know, how old it was at that time, so it's old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that's all I know about it. I just know I like it a lot. Oh, it's wonderful. We did find a signature mm -hmm. this evening. Eagle Eye uh, found the signature. <laughs> Eagle Eye yes. found the signature. I brazenly uh, said, it doesn't it's, have a signature. Yeah, it does. It's, it's right in there. I can't. Mm -hmm. We thought it said John. Mm -hmm. It's like John or Larry, I'm not sure, but anyway. <laughs> yes, there we go. I don't think the roof would help me. <laughs> My eyes are so bad, but anyway, uh, very well painted. The, the gold is beautiful. Uh, and the uh, border above the gold is turquoise, uh, yeah. white, turquoise, yeah. black. And oh, that's it's just pretty. really nice. And it, what, what did we say it was? It's, it's Limoges. Limoges. Limoges blank, yeah. Um, I believe it to be about 1880 to 1900, the mm -hmm. blank. Yeah. And it, the blank was made then, and then it was painted mm -hmm. later on. And the, probably up to 1920, um, they used to have a lot of painting clubs. We talked about this in one of our earlier shows. And this, the beauty of this is that the artist did sign it. They didn't mm -hmm. date it, but so often people put no value on their work, and they just didn't sign it. Mm -hmm. And when you see something as wonderful as this with all the different sha shadow uh, shades yeah, and shadowing. Yeah, this shadowing. This is very well done. Mm -hmm. And then when you see people collecting decal dog bowls, so to speak, and you see something like this, you just wonder, you know, where, what, uh, what people are thinking. But uh, there's a collector for everything, but this is exceptional. The leaves are variegated mm -hmm. with several different colors. And the shadowing in back. Mm -hmm. Very, very pretty. Mm -hmm. I would say this plate's uh, worth between 95 and 100 and a quarter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can put M&Ms and bring this over, Shirley. <laughs> M&Ms fit into everything. That's right. This is an M&M holder, too. <laughs> I want you to know I haven't had any candy since last December. It's just melting off of me now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a sweet little chocolate pot. And this is done in the manner of um, RS Prussia, RS Germany. It's the irregular shaped handle. The uh, mold, it was molded. But the artist did not follow the mold design. They did their own thing, which was prevalent yeah. in most of the mm -hmm. stuff. The bottom of the piece has um, ER, made in Germany, made in Germany yeah. and then it has a number in gold. The number in gold is the person that did the gold on the handle and the gold decoration over the uh, decal. This mm -hmm. was decaled, and this was hand-painted down here, and then it was all sealed. Mm -hmm. uh, chocolate pots are a real hot item right now. This is September 1994, we have to say this. They're very, very hot right now and uh, very desirable. People like pictures, but now chocolate pots are in. 
I would give this a value of between, uh, it's not real great, but it's awful cute, between 75 and probably a hundred and a quarter. Mm -hmm. Do you find them with uh, the cups very often? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. The people sometimes separated for some reason, either broke the cups or decided they wanted the cups for something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people, but people that collect, just collect the pots, they don't care about the cups. Mm -hmm. I have people that come in and ask me sometimes to split sets. I say, will you cut your left hand off from your right? No, I mean, when no. you have a, a set of anything, never split it. No. Regardless of what your mother says. <laughs> Other than the decoration, the handle almost looks Art Nouveau. If it didn't yeah. have any of this mm -hmm. goobly gob on the front, just a plain, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, that's uh, the, yeah. the heiress, and yeah. then, then again here. That's great looking. Well, as I grew up with that, I had absolutely no appreciation for it. I thought it was really ugly. Oh. Now that I'm approaching antique stage, <laughs> I like it a lot. <laughs> it's very nice. It looks better all the time. Also, your cameo ring is very attractive oh, on thank your you hand, very too. Much. From Sandwich. <laughs> very good. One of my finds. I'll give you five bucks for it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We're going to take a little break right now. Uh, we'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you. This concludes our presentation this evening of Backstage Antiques. We'd like to thank everybody that came and brought little goodies tonight. We hope that you go through your cabinets and find more, and we hope to see you again very soon. Greg, I want to thank you in spite of yourself. Thank you, Kay. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, <love her. laughs> and uh, again, thank you for being here with Backstage Antiques. <laughs>